Hey, what's up everybody out there in the vinyl community and in the YouTube lands and anywhere else people may be watching this video. Kendall coming back to you with another video for the Spin Doctor and his Vinyl Mayhem YouTube channel. And yes, it's that time of year again. The record store day list is out, which means it is time for me to give you my wants, my maybes, my what's interesting about the list, and just my regular thoughts about the list. <clears throat> this is a big one. Uh, I have the list right here. And man, let me see. Does it even say how many? I want to say there's like 380 something titles on this list. There's a lot. I have the list. I have my notes. And so yeah, let's uh, let's get into this. Now it's been three, four days since the list has come out. I wanted to spend a little bit of time looking at it, trying to digest it some. And I'll be honest with you, even with those four days or however many days it's been, I still am seeing a lot of stuff on this that I'm not seeing, like I'm seeing for the first time. And I know there's going to be things that I miss and I'm still going to see probably a week or two down the road and probably even right up until the actual day and the event. So bear with me. This is just my first thoughts and I'm sure there'll be more to come. Um, I do want to preface all this by saying that a lot of this stuff that I've picked for my must haves, my want, you know, my maybes and stuff like that, it's all going to depend on price. It always does. You know, I, I say this all the time, I collect on a budget. So, you know, also, <clears throat> as I always do, I'm going to spend my record store day over at Record Bar out in Wilmington, North Carolina. Shout out to those guys. They always make it fun. Tony, Donna, the crew out there, you guys are awesome. Also means I'm going to be seeing my, my gang out there, you know, to me, Record Store Day is all about having fun. It's all about, one, supporting your local record stores. Two, the community. You know, spending time with people that have the same love that you do about collecting records, music, and, you know, spending time with those people, getting to know them, hanging out, seeing people maybe you haven't seen in a long time. You know, when I go out there, I see people that I only see every once in a while. So it's always a lot of fun. I make, We make an event of it. So looking forward to seeing my gang out there, Chad Hovis, David Willett, Jerry Stone, all of you guys. It's going to be fun like always. So anyway, like I said, a huge list. When I first started going through this list, I'm not going to lie, I had about nine titles that I was like, ooh, I want that, ooh, I want that, ooh, I want that. As I looked over it more, I marked it down a little bit. So let's get into this. <clears throat> first on my list. I have about three on my must-haves. And honestly, two are probably actual real must-haves. That no matter what the price is, I will say this, I am walking out with these titles. One I'm actually a little bit worried about though. But first on my must-have list is Chris Isaac, Beyond the Sun Complete Collection. Now, uh, a couple of record store days ago, I wanna say it was a Black Friday, they did release a Chris Isaac Beyond the Sun collection, but it was only like certain titles from this collection. Um, I picked that up, of course, it was one LP. I think it had maybe 12 songs or something like that. This is the full collection from the full album that was released, I wanna say back in 2005, maybe. Um, I don't know if it's ever been released on LP. If it has, it's way out of print. But this is a two LP. Uh, it's an RSD exclusive, and there's only 2,000 copies. Only 2,000. Um, I will also say, I watched uh, Mike at the Ingroove. He was saying that he noticed with a lot of these titles, the numbers went down quite a bit um, with how many copies of certain titles they're doing. So that's going to be interesting to see as we get closer to the day and on the day. How many, you know, how many copies of things our store is going to have. That, and that worries me a little bit. But 2,000 copies of Chris Isaac. This is definitely, I'm walking out with this one no matter what. I love Chris Isaac. I love this album. Um, tons of great old 
rockabilly rock and roll classics from like Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee Lewis, Elvis Presley, um, you know, just old uh, Carl Perkins, uh, just great, you know, songs from the 50s and early 60s, uh, you know, just awesome stuff like that. This is a great, great, great album. Love it. Um, super excited about that one. Um, and again, it's an RSC exclusive, so only released once. Second, and this is the one that I'm worried about, Tesla Real to Real. This is a covers album that they released um, a while back um, on CD and streaming. Uh, this one, I, I've I've heard it before. It's awesome. I love Tesla. Tesla is one of those bands that I think doesn't get the credit they deserve. They got mixed in with the hair metal of the 80s, but to me, they're not hair metal. They are, to me, like Guns N' Roses, I think. Um, just a awesome to the edge hard, hard rock band uh and still sounding great today i think love tesla and this is a great great covers album some great classic songs on this if you haven't heard it go stream it right now i actually knew this was coming out last year um i heard tesla i believe it was on the eddie trunk radio show last year sometime and i think it was the guitar player or bass player said that these were coming out for record store day this year um because there's two of them there's a real to real and real to real two 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 covers albums and he said he let the cat out of the bag i don't know if he was supposed to do that but he said that these were going to be coming out for record store day so i knew about this in advance so i so i knew it was going to be on this list and so i was super excited about it two lp uh rsd exclusive so only once 1,500 copies. That's what worries me. And the reason it worries me is because I know that my buddies that are going to be at the record bar are going to be in for this title. Um, Chad Hovis, I know for sure. I think David will probably will be too. And with only 1,500 copies, I don't know how many copies record bar is going to get. So I'm a little bit worried about this one. But what's cool about this is that I know uh, it was recorded using analog equipment it, live in the studio. Um, and then mixed and everything for, uh, for, um, vinyl, um, at Sterling Sound. So, a 180 gram vinyl, gatefold, all that kind of stuff. And they're actually going to go on tour to support this this year. So that's pretty cool too. So those are the two that are for sure coming home with me as long as there's copies. Uh, next, Collective Soul, Dosage, this is the 25th anniversary. This has never been on vinyl before. This is their fourth studio album, and to me, the really last good album. Their first three albums, I think, are great. The fourth one was pretty good. Uh, it's a one LP. It's an RSD first, so that's why this one may or may not be coming home with me, depending. Um, limited to 2,000 copies. Uh, some good tracks on this one. Uh, run, Heavy. Um... So I'm, you know, we'll see on this one. Uh, down, now we're down to my maybe. So like I said, there were three that were, you know, must-haves, although Collective Soul kind of went down to a maybe. So now maybes. Um, this one is interesting to me because uh, I'm a huge Dr. John fan. Grizz Grizz Gumbo Yaya, uh, singles from 1968 to 1974. This is a 2 LP set, RSD first, 1,800 copies. Um, these are all A and B sides from the US and UK, and it's on colored vinyl. So we're talking from his first album all the way to um, Bung, to, 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 uh, the Bonnaroo or, or whatever album. It was the album after um, Right Place. Um, so there are a lot of good stuff. There, there's a lot of good stuff on this. Now I have most of those albums. But there's some B-sides that I don't have that are on those albums. That's why I'm a little curious. Price going to be a very big factor on this one. And the fact that it is an RSD first. It is going to be on color vinyl, which is always cool. But I am a huge Dr. John fan. My wife is too. And since she's going to be going with me, she may be pushing me to get this one. I know that much. So we'll see. Um, so yeah, Dr. John's awesome. Great, uh, great funk jazz soul you know if you, I'm, i know you guys know dr john so um this one is a maybe uh the who the story of the who this one is a 2lp uh rsd first again um this is the 1976 uh compilation that was never actually released here in the u.s it was a uk only 
Um, it's a, this is actually being released on vinyl for the first time since 1989. And this has long been considered the best compilation album for The Who because it's got so many of their hits together that you can't find. Like, I have a couple of compilations of theirs, but you feel like you're missing so many of songs on these compilations. This one, like, I've looked at the track listing. It's got everything on it, basically. So that one is definitely a maybe. It also comes uh, in colored vinyl and an eight-page booklet. Um, so that's pretty cool. I believe this is also going to be an Abbey Roads, uh, you know, like cause all the, the Who albums are. Um, the Half Speed Master at Abbey Road. Um, so that's something to consider as well. Uh, this is a blank page. Don't know what happened there. Um, and then the last one on my maybes list uh, that really caught my attention, which I thought was kind of cool, uh, was the Dwight Yoakam. Uh, the beginning and uh, then some. The albums of the 80s. This is a 4LP, I guess you call it a box set. This is an RSD exclusive and there's 3,500 copies. It's his first three albums and then a disc of rarities and demos. Um, I've always been a Dwight Yoakam fan. He's got that Bakersfield sound. Um, you know, just a different kind of country. Um, and his first three albums are, are probably his best. Although, I, honestly, I, I think his probably first five albums are, are, are great. Um, and they're getting harder and harder to find. They're, they've definitely long been out of print. But, um, so, so this one caught my attention. Again, price is definitely going to be be the thing here. 4LP set, that's going to be pricey, I'm sure. Probably into like the $120, $150 range is my fear here. So that one's probably going to be a push it back. And plus my wife is not a country fan, so she's going to be like, why you... Why do you have this on your list? So anyway, so those are my wants and, and maybes. Um, other things that uh, definitely I think are interesting, um, but, uh, you know, eh, um, something that's funny uh, that caught my attention was the Cheech and Chong Up in Smoke on Smoky Green Vinyl. Just because, remember, uh, Record Store Day is on April 20th, 420. So that was pretty, pretty entertaining. Um, let's see. Just going to mention it. There's another live Doors, another live Garcia, and another live Dead. Um, I just, I'm kind of burnt out on all that. This one caught my attention. Um, GBI, that's Grohl, Benetti, and uh, Ian. Uh Dave Grohl, Charlie Benetti, Scott Ian. This is a seven inch though. Um, but the story behind it's pretty cool. Um, Anthrax was in the studio. Foo Fighters were also in the same studio recording. Uh, they kind of, I think Dave uh, poked his head in or vice versa, I don't remember. And they said, hey guys, we'll, we'll, you know, uh, you, you guys wanna re record a song together? And uh, what, they're like, hey, yeah, I'm gonna be here tomorrow at 12. And so, uh, what, what do you guys want to do? Uh, and they were like, uh, you want to do, and they ended up, um, deciding to do a Bad Brain song, The Regulator, and, uh, all proceeds are going to go to a charity. Again, it's going to be on a seven inch, uh, one song, the other side's going to be an etching. That one might be kind of fun just because it's, it's those three. Dave's going to be on drums and on, uh, vocals. Benetti's going to be playing bass instead of drums, Ian on guitar. Um, this one caught my attention just because of what it is, but I already have this record just in stereo. The Bill Evans, everybody digs Bill Evans. I mean, it is AAA all analog cut, um, by Kevin Gray, Stout and Jacket. I have a early 2000s or late 90s pressings of this from, Mer from Riverside. It's considered an OJC. It's in stereo. The reason I'm going to pass on this one is just because I don't listen to Bill Evans as much as I used to anymore. I still have the records and I, I, I just don't want to, I don't think I'm, to me it's not worth spending the money on it anymore. Um, I mean, I'm sure it's going to sound amazing, but I, I don't listen to my Bill Evans stuff now as much as I used to. Uh, so I don't think I really want to spend the money. 
Um, the cash grab of this one is definitely the Beatles three inch turntable. It looks really cool. It's definitely gonna sell out because Beatles collectors are crazy about this stuff. So more power to you. It, like, it's cool, not for me. Um, this one caught my attention just because you don't see this album and um, it's definitely probably a great funk album. The Parliament uh, Osium Deluxe first album. You know, it's the first album. Uh, I'm sure this one's been long out of print. Um, you know, it's George Clinton's first uh, album after Funkadelic broke up and started Parliament. Um, you know, I just thought it was neat. Queen's got a, a seven inch coming out of Cool Cat, which I don't really understand why. Uh, it came off of Hot Space. Hot Space was not a very, not their best album by any means. Um, and Cool Cat was definitely not the single off that record. It was under pressure. Um, so I'm not sure why. Um, this one, I, you know what? This one still kind of interests me. Uh, Rolling Stones um, live uh, from that club in New York. This was this is an RSD first though. So, um, but this is uh, for the release of their latest album, um, Hackney Diamonds. They played that set at this club. There's a few hits on it, but then some tracks from the new album. And of course they finished the show with uh, the song that has uh, Lady Gaga on it. And she came out on stage and, and did it. Um, it's been released on CD, but this is for uh, on vinyl for the first time. That one might be kind of cool, but it is an RSD first. And then this one I think is gonna be really good, but probably won't pick it up just because um, I'm kind of iffy on live albums to begin with, but Talking Heads Live at the WCOZ uh, in 1977. This is an RSD exclusive. It is a 2LP, uh, cut at 45 RPM. I've heard great reviews of this already and the sound quality being amazing. So this one's probably going to sell out pretty quick, I think. Uh, Talking Head fans are pretty, you know, pretty on it. So, yeah. But anyway, those are the ones that I've... Uh, that have caught my attention probably the most. I know there's stuff I missed, guys, but uh, you know, for the most part, I think you know definitely this is a pretty pretty good list, um, and I think there's stuff for everybody on it. Again, I just love the idea of Record Store Day, what it brings, what it does. It's a lot of fun. You know, it's a good chance to go out support your local record store. And you don't just have to buy RSD titles. Normally, like I always say this, your record store will have probably other things on sale. They run discounts on stuff, used records, new records. You know, so go in and support them on that kind of stuff too. Um, anyway, let me know what you guys think about the list. Titles that you definitely want to pick up. Titles um, that you're interested in. Maybe they're titles that I mentioned that you're excited about. Maybe there's titles I missed that I should be excited about that you guys are. Let me know about them. Uh, give me the old thumbs up, hit me uh, up with a like and a subscribe, I'd appreciate it. If not, hey, it is what it is. But hope to talk to you guys soon, and uh, until next time, peace out, bye.